and welcome back to the Regimentals YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to say it again, it's been a while since I did a video. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, I do find it hard to keep going. Uh, I've said in previous videos, my daughter used to help me with the videos and she's not working with, you, me, with me anymore. Um, so it's quite hard to motivate yourself to just keep going and keep showing stuff. But I can't deny that it's a great selling tool for me. So uh, some of you may have recently seen me appear um, in a video uh, for another YouTuber, um, Alex from War Stories uh, Militaria or War Story Military Antiques. And um, I was at the CNA show and he filmed me and we had a good chat about trying to encourage each other to keep going, putting material out there. Because um, although some of what we do feels corny or cheesy or or, you know, strange us doing it. We do understand that it's great for you guys to see some of the cool stuff that we, that we get or we see when we go to shows. So talking to Alex really did um, inspire me to get going on an another video. And then just this week, um, I had a parcel come into me, which really drove me to want to do this new video. And it's this piece right here next to me. And it's something that I used to own uh, many years ago. Um, I featured it in my book, Africa Core. Um, that I published many years ago and I've been uh, privileged enough to be asked to resell it, rehome it and it's possibly, well not possibly, it is for me the most fantastic Africa Corps uniform set that I've ever had. Um, as you can see, bleached to bone white Panzer officers set with the Panzer officers cap with the Sutash um, and if I can give you an idea of rarity with the Panzer officers items I would say that for every five man's caps, there's one officer's, which tells you the rarity of the officer version. So if you get an officer's cap with Sutash um, bleached to bone white, being Panzer, it is the top of the tree. It's the best of the best and it's the best you're going to get. For me, the only thing that could supersede this in rarity would be a general's uniform, bleached to bone white and named. And I put this belt with it. This is the early green officer's belt. Again, a very rare item being in the early green. Lovely maker's mark inside. Um, you can't see any dates inside. It's completely washed out. Uh, it's got the tropical breast eagle on there. He's chosen to wear the, uh, the NCOs and man's eagle as officers quite often did. And when you look under the collar here, you can see the jacket was issued with enlisted man's collar patches and then the officer's collar patches are applied over the top. Another common feature you see with the Africa Corps uniforms. Now that means he could have been an NCO promoted to officer, but more than likely he's just been reissued with a man's tunic and he's upgraded it to his rank as officer. That's what they often did. So quite often, don't be alarmed, when you turn an officer's collar patches over, you see the stitch lines because it's quite likely that the enlisted man's or NCO's collar patches are underneath his officer's collar patches. As I said, common feature with Africa Corps uniforms. Very worn out um, officer's, panzer officer's shoulder boards. And then this stuff cap, which you can't see the maker mark inside, it's washed out, but from experience, I can tell that it's quite probably a Robert Lubstein cap, um, probably 1941 dated, judging by the material that's been used, but with that lovely pink sutash on there, the early tropical roundel and a completely untouched eagle. And the wear on it is just, it's just exactly how you want to have um, an Africa Corps cap. So if you're a collector out there or an enthusiast of Africa Corps items, and you want to have just the, the most iconic set, this is the one for you. And it's expensive, but one of those pieces which will always sell, because when you have something which is either top condition or irreplaceable, it's always gonna sell. Moving on to the other pieces you see on the table here, I wanted to talk about these two um, Panzer uniforms. Now, these appeared on the website last week and they both sold straight away, but before they get shipped out, I wanted to just feature them in the video to try and help educate people slightly in the difference between the early Panzer wrap overs and the later ones. Now these are not uh, your usual Panzer wraps, they don't have pink piping. This is a signals wrap and this is the cavalry reconnaissance wrap. So they're rarer than your Panzer uh, examples. The lemon yellow piping signifies uh, signals and the golden yellow piping signifies cavalry. 
uh, slight differences between the two, but when you put them side by side, you can notice those differences. But what I wanted to feature here was about the configuration to point out that one is an early jacket and one is later. So you can see the differences between the early uh, wrap over and the later one. The later one has the button just above the eagle there for it to be buttoned closed through that button hole there. And the early one has no button above the eagle and no button hole on the on the lapel, so it can't be button closed. So that would signify that this one here is the early model. So on the early version, which is the cavalry reconnaissance wrap over, you'll notice above the breast eagle, there's no button and on the lapel, there's no buttonhole. So in the early models, it couldn't be wrapped over and done up. So that's just something I wanted to point out to you about these wrap overs, how to spot an early version and a mid-war version. The early ones, probably 1935, 36, 37, and the, 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 the later one was probably slightly later at the start of the war. Resting on the uh, wrap overs here is this SA Honor Dagger. Now this is an absolutely stunning rare piece with the leather covered scabbard, the elaborate chains, the SA logo there, and the really exotic engraving on the cross guard at the top as well and inside is just a standard blade there's no it's not a damascus blade um, it's a standard blade that's how they were issued make a marked as well you know it's not mint condition but sa honor daggers are extremely rare and quite expensive i think that one is going to be on the website for about twenty thousand pounds okay so just a few other things that i wanted to feature coming onto the website we have a really fantastic Fauschenjäger paratrooper, German paratrooper's helmet coming on, uh, all nice inside with the straps and this lovely thick camouflage paint finish on it. It's not elaborate colours, it's a single tone colour, but lovely texture. Um, it's a real, it's a real one looker, as they would say. And, and next to it here, we have the British paratrooper's helmet. Now, British paratrooper helmets um, really gone up in price recently. Um, there's to keep it brief there's all different there's, there's different versions the later model had the webbing straps the earlier model had leather straps but then the very first model 1942 had the leather straps and a fiber rim going around the edge of the helmet here and this is the fiber rim model it's got a lovely scrim net on the top it's really been there really worn and this was the preferred model worn by the senior uh, members of the paratroop regiment because they had them from the start and they were issued with this helmet and they liked to keep it throughout the war. So the fibre rim is considered the rarest and the most popular of all of the British paratrooper helmets. And then if I just talk about the pickle halves quickly, um, here at the back here, lovely Saxon officers here with the plume, very elaborate piece and beautiful condition. But this is the one which I like the most. This is the um, model 90, um, 1895 cork cloth covered pickle harp. Now these feature quite heavily in the series of books Feldzug by Michael Baldwin. Um, very rare pieces, very well collected. And I really would advise having a look through Feldzug 1914, 15, 16, so you can educate yourself on, on who made these, these helmets and how. But it's a really lovely piece with the ersatz uh, chin strap there very very nice and rare piece and then lastly here at the end of the uh, the row of items I have a lovely selection of iron crosses now these are going on the website today um, Friday and we've just managed to get in a, a big collection of iron crosses many numbered rings nearly all of them have numbered rings some rare versions there also the 1957 version as well which is sometimes rarer than the wartime ones um, so I just wanted to let you know about these iron crosses going on the website because it, I really think that um, the price of iron crosses is going to go up dramatically in the next two or three years. So if you're thinking of picking up one or two, now is the time to do it. So as I mentioned at the start of my video, um, I was at CNA a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so let's just briefly touch on the show circuit uh, as we approach summer. Um, tomorrow Bedford Arms Fair is on. This video will probably be live um, uh, after Bedford so 
just letting you guys know that Bedford Arms Fair is restarting, so maybe get there next time. So on May the 22nd, uh, we will be at Stonely. Um, we'll have a large stand there. I'd really recommend getting to Stonely. It's a good show. Um, and then, of course, War and Peace show is on in the summer and Odyssey. They're going to be the main shows that we'll see you at in the summer. So, um, yeah, we're cracking ahead, updating the website every Friday around two o'clock. Please get on there and have a look. Hope you enjoyed the video and I shall see you soon.